Hi, welcome to Blind Owl Bushcraft and Survival. Hi, welcome to Blind Owl Bushcraft and Survival. My name's Dan, here in the Philippines on the island of Bohol. Today I thought I'd do a quick little shout out video for a real nice guy. His channel name is Addicted to Blades 2, the number 2 at the end. Real nice guy from Iowa. And uh, he has some real, real nice. Uh, cutting videos that he, he cuts things with swords things like that he also has a, a real neat little segment of a series of videos where he uses like a, a bend one of those bendy sta straws and he cuts he cuts the straws with his smaller knives like his hunting knives and, and uh, folding knives and different things like that so you have to have a pretty you have to have a pretty sharp knife to cut a straw, I would think. I, I've never, I haven't tried it yet, but I, I will. But real nice guy. I just wanted to shout out to him. I thought I'd make a real quick video on work knives. And uh, this this guy here, he looks like he lives on a farm. I, I don't know, know much about him. I've just been watching him a lot. I really like him. He told me the other day that he's from Iowa. And I'm, I'm from Iowa, so. Uh, oh, I know. I know. Also, I really like about him is he's throwing things also he's got a real real big target to throw at and I was very impressed with his tomahawk throwing he was throwing tomahawks underhanded into the target which I thought was exceptional think think how devastating of a of a, a, a survival attack that would be when you have you have your tomahawk at your side not not up here like this like some like some crazy person swinging at somebody or, or throwing it at them you got it right here by your side and all you got to do is go like that and throw it and it was wicked it was wicked but he also had a, a cold steel shovel which looked very heavy as he's throwing it but he was throwing it and sticking it like crazy. He was hanging down, in one video, he was hanging down uh, gourds or squashes, like like pumpkins and things like that, you know, it's after the season. And with the shovel splitting those that were hanging in front of the target, things like that. Uh, very impressive. Plus he also has some very nice cold steel uh, throwing knives, stuff like that. I just, I just, I'm very impressed with that. I'm, I'm in the process right now of building a, uh, thing to to start throwing more uh, some sort of a I'm, I'm gonna I'm shooting for a meter square of I got some real old four by fours that are half rotted but I think I think they'll work if I can figure some way to connect them that's gonna be the key four by fours five by fives whatever they are they're pretty big soft hand cut lumber with chainsaws here but I thought I'd show a quick video about some work knives now I have all different style work knives here's a here's a nice knife here that I I, I picked up here at a um, knife table at a market and it's about a seven or seven and a half eight inch blade at the most something like that it's got a, it's got some nice thickness to it it's got a cheap handle but the nice thing about it is it here here in the Philippines everything is rat tail just little short tangs and every knife has an edge on one side but this one has a long tail on it that goes all the way through the handle and wraps around on the outside. It's kind of awkward. It needs to be worked on a little bit. But it's actually a very nice knife. This this was, knife was probably sold for um, like a butcher knife or to chop like a, instead not a cleaver, but for like cutting up roasted pigs and things like that. But I made it into a nice little um, bushcraft work type knife. And then I made a PVC sheath for it. And I put a uh, Solomon bar dangler handle on the back of it and then on the front I just have a lighter see if the lighter is still good 
Yep, lighter's still good. A lighter, and then one of the little little plastic straws that you seal on both ends. And I can't remember what I have inside there, if it's cotton and neosporin, or if it is a, uh, I had some polisher stuff that I used a while back uh, for a uh, real good starter. But just a all around knife, and this knife cost me a whopping, I'm guessing around, I'd say about four dollars or five dollars something like that and i've worked on the blade and changed things around i made the the sheath for it, stuff like that but there's there's five or six dollars in it the most and a little bit of time a little bit of imagination one of the best work knives i have is this bolo we call knives like this we call bolos here but this is a parang parang style knife that i designed when i first got here i saw a parang on a video one time back in, in 2003 or 2004 and I just had it in my head that's what, what I was going to make when I I got here. I found a blacksmith that made this for me. He wanted 300 pesos to make this knife and again what he didn't like was I wanted a full tang handle. He wanted to make the little rat tail but I, I insisted on a full tang handle and uh, just a fantastic knife. I had to make two of these for me. He wanted 300 pesos for him. I gave him 350 pesos each for him. And uh, they were two and a half pounds originally because they're quarter inch thick. Uh, we ground down the sides until now they're one point, about 1.75 pounds. I have two of them. And the other one has a little bit bigger, a little wider handle on it. And then I, I wrapped the fiberglass epoxy tape around it. Made a huge difference. Gives you a little texture. But very, very nice knives. And then this one doesn't have a sheath, but I have another one. The, other, the twin of this one has a heavy PVC sheath with a another sheath PVC sheath piggybacked on it that has an old hickory in it. You've seen, the, you've seen it before if you watch the videos. Fantastic knife setup. Um, here's a work knife here. This is a this is a knife that I made out of a cane knife, and this is I was, I was calling this one my moonshiner clone. It's a little thinner than a real moonshiner from from Condor. Um, it works great. It has I think it has an 11 inch blade on it. Uh, the only bad thing about it is it, it's just a little, little too flexible because it's it's made out of like a like a machete type type steel. I've also got a PVC sheath for it with the dangler loop on it. Uh, we use this to to uh, to unhusk or dehusk a couple coconuts and to pry the husk up to get going. The blade bent on it didn't bend, but you can see it bending. So it's not quite right. It's not quite good enough, but it's great for weeds and stuff like that. My wife loves it for uh, chopping weeds and uh, doing yard work because it's very nice and light and sharp. Another work knife is this knife here. This is a knife I called the Pirate Buoy. And it was a big, big long knife when I started with it and uh, ground it down and put a handle on it and wrapped the handle with jute twine and it has a chisel grind on it uh, it's a pretty nice knife I, i've worked in the handle many times i keep keep making it smaller um, the handle itself is just a little a little too short for my hands for doing a lot of work but it's a good again it's a good knife for around the house around the yard uh, it'd be a good knife if i had a sheath i just want another one i don't have a sheath for I had a sheath for it for a dangler or something to keep in the car or where, wherever you're going to use it. It'd be, a, it'd be a fine knife. It does anything you want it to do. I've made several uh, bow drill sets with it, so it's, it's, fa it's fantastic for what it is. And again, this is a knife here. I bought the, the, the piece of steel. It didn't have any handles on it, but it had the shape of a blade on it. And uh, I think I gave, I, I'm going to guess in about 350 pesos for it, so maybe $7 something like that and then a little time for a handle okay. basically nothing um, 
my latest knife that I use all the time is this one. I call this my workhorse. This was made out of an old found cleaver uh, made out of Philippine steel. Most of the stuff it comes from spring steels, from springs of cars and trucks, vans. Um, I modified it quite a bit, put some different angles on it, you know, like here and stuff like that. Those angles there really come in handy for when you're, you're say you're making a, uh, like say a bow drill set, and you got all the little wood chips, you just tip the knife to the side and use that as a, like a, you know, it's something to, to slide your, your chips and stuff off, very handy. They all have 90 degree spines, so you could use a ferro rod on them if you wanted to. Uh, this knife is pretty nice though because uh, the only thing that could be better in this knife, it was about two inches longer, but this is what I had to work with. It, it was like a five inch cleaver with a real with a real narrow handle on it, and I did a special epoxy job on the handle to make the handle much bigger. And uh, again, I've made several uh, bowl drills with this. It works fantastic. It's, it's just a nice knife. And then the the steel here on these knives is usually they usually has a pretty they usually have a pretty sharp edge on it because it's just a half of an edge they don't sharpen the backside so it goes down and they usually it's usually a pretty thick so what I did was two different times I flattened the blade out so what I really have is a flat basically a flat grind on here and then uh, I did that with the right angle grinder uh, anchor to the countertop you might have seen the videos on that then I have a nice handle on it with jute twine wrapped around it and then rubber cement over the jute twine it has just perfect perfect grip on it it absolutely zero slip even completely soaking wet there's no no chance of slipping with it um great knife and i've got a little sheath for it that holds it pretty well and then I put a, a special type of dangle loop looper on it that this one this loop here goes this way instead of around and it fits perfect for a run I, this one here I have a, a custom made rope that I use around my waist to hold it up my Jethro Bodine um, suspension system works fantastic for out in the field I don't I don't have a, a belt extra belt this one this has a loop big enough for a belt if I had one but I don't have, I don't have one this is a fantastic knife here though. This is the knife that I use mostly around uh, right now for, for doing different chores. But I want to show you this knife here. This knife here is one of my favorite knives. I had this made the same day that I made the um, parangs. I had two parangs made and this knife here made. Now, this is made out of a, a spring from a uh, Mercedes-Benz van from Korea, an old junk one. And it's, it's just about a quarter inch thick. For the blade though, I had it make it kind of, it's kind of like a cleaver, but still has the knife shape to it. I had a knife like this back in 1990 that was this shape here, but two inches shorter, but two inches wider, but still had the knife shape on it. Someone finally stole it from me in, in Iowa. Um, but this was this was the most this was the most that we could this 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 length here. This was the most that we could draw the spring out decently in the forge, and then ground it down, put a nice edge on it. This one weighs about a pound and a half. It's still heavy enough to chop trees and, and stuff like a like a hatchet or a, or a prang or a machete or whatever but it has a nice compact weight to it and the main reason i like the wide blade is i use my knives again these are work knives so don't take this personal these are work knives and a knife like this is a knife that i would have on my belt like say i'm in the garden working transplanting plants whatever this is a trowel i would just jam it in the in the in the dirt push it back drop a seedling down, pull it out, and put the dirt around it. It's so simple, so nice, so fantastic. And again, you can do that all day long. You'd never dull the blade in a million years. And if you do, who cares? Because you come home, and if it was super dull, I would just run the right angle grinder around the edge and put it on the buffer. But nine times out of 10, all I would do 
was would be taken home after I'm done working with it for a day. I'd run it across. I run it across the buffer four or five times, and then maybe once across the back edge because the back edge is flat. It just has the, the the grind on one side. And this also this was this was the I think this was the first knife that I put a jute twine handle on with the um, this this one here I used uh, Loctite Go two glue with the number two go two glue and uh, a real nice rubbery coating on the outside of the jute twine I did a couple of handles on hatches with super glue on jute twine and it, it's a very nice finish too but it's more of a hard varnish finish where this is just this has the texture to it and this this knife here this knife here is just a little heavy but it's great for chopping it'd be great for a barbecue for for a roast pig whatever chopping it up but it's good enough that I can make um, things like again what I, I mostly make is, is bow drills or I'll be splitting wood for uh, a fire or whatever and again this is this this is the perfect knife for batoning because again it's it's got to be yeah, maybe nine inches long something like that to the point but absolutely fantastic knife and this one right here, again, I, I, I made this knife in 2004 and I've used it a lot and back in 2004 I didn't have a sheath or anything like that so I didn't have PVC, I didn't even think about, I didn't know about heating up PVC back then. Uh, I found a, a four gallon, uh, what was in there, a soy sauce container and I cut out the shape that I wanted and I didn't have any torture or anything. I used a Bic lighter. I heated up the edge of it, the center of it, folded it over, and then I didn't have a drill or anything. I found a nail, and in the the fire, because we we use just wood for cooking, in the fire and the coals, I would heat the nail up, and then I would just burn holes all the way through it, and then I wire in town which was I thought was copper wire but it turned out to be just crappy steel wire with a copper coating on it because it's actually rusting now and then I used two pieces of that and zigzag back and forth and sewed it up and then put a, a dangler loop on that and the reason I had these loops on here this is a Solomon bar like a Cobra stitch on it I had these on here so that I back then all I had was a motorcycle I would slide this over the handlebar of my motorcycle behind the clutch in there and then I would always have a I'd always have a knife at my hand on my motorcycle when I'm driving around the mountains or wherever I'm at. So very, very uh, fancy deal. Uh, it's a nice setup. And I've evolved in my, my handle making and my knife making and stuff quite a ways where I'm actually making my own now and and modifying pieces that I find, things like that. I have my own little forge outside. You might have seen some videos on that. I also like my strikers for flint and steel. Uh, this is just a this is just a broken off file, but I've also used some of the broken pieces of different files and made them into regular strikers in the forge. But I just wanted to say, everybody, if you would please go check out the channel Addicted to Blades 2. Addicted to Blades number two. I'll put a link in it in the description, of course. And uh, go say hi. And uh, please subscribe, of course. And I think I think you guys will enjoy the. I think you'll enjoy his channel. It's got a lot of nice stuff on there. A lot of a lot of knife and, knife and sword and, and throwing and things like that on there. There's other things on there too. Um, but just a, just a nice guy. So check him out and uh, make sure you go out. Have some fun. Hashtag 22 a day. Let's help those vets out. Make the awareness out there for them. Send your congressman a letter. Call your congressman. Call your congressman's aide. Ask, hey, do they know that 22 veterans a day are killing themselves in, in America? That's absolutely insane. If they do, ask them why aren't they doing something about it? Why is it going on? Also, uh, watch your six. Watch your six really close. 
be aware of what's going on. It's near the holidays and watch out for crowds and the busy stores and just be aware of what's going on everywhere you're at. I think there's going to be more problems in the cities. If there's going to be any problems, they're probably going to be in the cities. We'll be out in the country. You won't have any problem out in your deer stand or anything like that, of course. But uh, enjoy yourself. I, I'm trying to enjoy every day as much as I can. I go outside almost every day and walk around and look close at the ground and bushes and things like that, just enjoying nature and the flowers and the different leaves and looking for butterflies and lately we've been finding dragonflies and stuff. So uh, and I love I love the rocks. I've been having a been having a blast with the rocks and the the, the steel, flint and steel, but I call it stone and steel. But please, please be extra careful, okay? And uh, check out Addicted, Addicted to Blades too, if you would please. See you guys later. Thank mm -hmm. you.